Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this video we'll be doing a Photoshop glitch effect. If you enjoy this video, make sure to click the like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop, take a look at my complete training, and you'll find a link for that in the description. Okay, let's get to it. This Photoshop glitch effect requires a couple of techniques that you probably haven't used in the past or haven't used very much. They're not normally used in this way, but it's a very, very interesting effect. We'll start off though with a brand new file. Let me just close this one down. There we go. Let's close that. And then I'll open up the original picture right here. Now there's a link for this on my video support page. You'll find that, of course, in the description as well. Let's just zoom in here, fit screen. Now the first thing we have to do at this point before we do anything else is to get the colors shifting in here. The red shifting to one side and the green shifting to the other side. Kind of a chromatic aberration effect. Now we'll do that with the channels. You can see that this is an RGB image. So we have our RGB channels down here. I'll click on the red channel and I'm going to use my left arrow key and just tap it five times. So one, two, three, four, five. That moves the red channel left five times. Let's come down to the green channel. Do the same thing but the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, five to the right. If we now go back to our RGB, you can see how it shifted the red to the left. You can see it right there. And it shifted the green to the right. You can see the green up here. You can really see it on the edges. There's the green shift and there's the red shift showing. And that gives us that kind of colorized effect. Now this has to be done at this point, otherwise you won't be able to make these shifts unless you collapse your layers down. We don't want to do that. So first step, taking care. Pretty easy to do, but as you can see it's an interesting little effect. There's really very little use for this aside from this kind of image distortion. Now one thing to keep in mind, this does come in and it does directly affect the actual image. So at this point you should save your file to a different file name. That way, you'll still keep your original untouched. So let's go ahead and do that one. File, and then come down to Save As. And there we go. Now let's change the setting here to a Photoshop file. Here's the one that you saw in the beginning of the video. So I'll just name this one 3. Let's just change our name here to 3 and choose Save. And there we are. There is our save file. And very important to do this step so you don't accidentally overwrite your original image. Okay, now we'll begin working on our glitch. In case you want to be able to go back to this step, to, let's go ahead and copy the background. Let's write it down to the new background button right there. Here we'll copy that background. There we go. And now we can begin working on our glitching. We also can close down the channels. We don't need that any longer. So here's our background copy. Now for the background, we're going to be doing a left and right shift in here. And we'll be using a special little filter. Go up here to filter, come down to distort and then down to wave right there. I'm going to show you how this thing works. I'm going to go over here to the triangle wave. I'm going to just increase some of our numbers a bit here. And it's a very strange filter. There's all the kind of kind of strange weird effects in here. You get kinds of weird patterns and things happening. Most of the time nothing you can really use. But if you control this, if you bring the controls down to low settings and control them, then, then it becomes a very, very useful little filter. We'll start off with bringing the number generators down to a very low number. I'm going to bring it down to 5. Let's type in 5 right there. And let's set our type here at square. There we go, 5 and square. I'm going to pull this over to the left just a bit so you can see what's happening in here. Now, we have two scales here. The top scale is horizontal, bottom scale is vertical. We only want to have the horizontal working for our glitch effects. Let's just pull the vertical clear to the left, and it's going to show a size of 1. We can now see how these other controls work. First off, the scale is going to allow you to adjust the amount of the overall controls up here. It's kind of like a fine-tuned control for your other settings. Now on the wavelength, we have a minimum and a maximum. We'll be keeping these lined up for this. If I pull the wavelength to the right, you'll see how the waves get larger. If I go to the left, grab the bottom control, push to the left, and they get smaller. So down towards here, smaller wavelengths over towards the right, 
larger wavelengths. Now the amplitude here, again I'll put these so they're lined up, the amplitude controls the amount of shift on this left and right. So you can think of the wavelength as up and down and the amplitude left and right and the scale kind of scales the whole thing once you've finished with that. So to keep all these things set we have a minimum and a maximum. Notice right now they are one number apart 59, 60, 170, 171. The maximum is always at least one more than the minimum. Now to keep these together, if you are going to the right, grab the top control and pull that over. You go to the left, grab the bottom control and pull that over. You go the other direction, you can pull these apart. But the bottom, the max, is always going to be equal or to the right of the top. So because of that, if you pull to the left, pull the bottom, go to the right, pull the top. Now what we want here is to find a nice size for our wavelength and also make sure the eye is a nice clean eye in here. So just kind of pull it over and you can see there are several spots like right there the eye shows and a little too small I think on the glitches and they go a little larger. There's another spot right here is pretty good. 317 looks pretty good. We're pretty close. Now the numbers that I actually used up here is 332 and this will jump to 333 right there. So that's the one I actually used. Now this matches this particular photo in that particular eye position. If you're using a different photo, then you may need to adjust these a little bit until you find just the right position. But for ours, it's 332 and 333. Now on the amplitude, this is how much of the shift is. You see right down there. I don't want to have a whole lot of shift. But I want to have some shift in here. And what I found looks nice for this particular image is 32 and 33. Now, this is about one-tenth of that, but that is not a rule. So I don't think that this is a rule to do this one-tenth of that. It actually is just a visual choice. And you may want to use a different amount of offset. It's up to you. Okay, so we have 5 at the top, square, wavelength of 332 and 333, amplitude 32 and 33, and then on the scale, it's sitting at 18, and that's actually good for this image. If I go more, I can go larger or less, but I found that 18 on this step for this image is a nice setting. We have undefined areas down here, wrap around or repeat edges. I'll leave mine at wrap around on that. That just controls the look of the edges here where the glitch effect is going off the sides. Choose OK, and there's our first stage glitch effect. Okay, now, we'll be adding a second one on this. This is pretty good. Looks nice. Get a nice little glitch. So it's pretty even. We want to roughen this up just a little bit. We can roughen that up by adding in a second glitch effect on top of this first glitch effect. So I'll take this layer, and I'm going to just rename this one Glitch 1. Okay, now, let's take this, copy this down to a new layer. There we go. And let's change the name of this one to glitch 2. So glitch 1 and glitch 2. On this layer, let's apply a glitch on top of this to distort this even further. Go up here to filter, come down to distort and wave. There's our settings. Now I'm going to be increasing the number of generators up here. Let's go up here to 13 this time. It gives more of a distortion effect in there. I'm going to be bringing down the wavelength. Now notice if I offset these, I get more of a distortion on that. You can see what's happening in there. We want to keep these together. But I'll bring it down a bit, just make the lines smaller. Now the one that I used in here was 178 and 179, right there. On the amplitude, let's bring the amplitude down as well. And if it's smaller, there's not quite as much of a shift. And you can see how this new set is giving me a bit of added distortion in here and a bit of randomness on this. Now the settings that I used were 10 and 14 on the max right there. Now it's still too much on the scale. I want to bring the scale down a bit. So I'll bring this down to 10. So there we go. There's the basic settings for that. Generators 13, wavelength 178 and 179. We're still on square. Amplitude 10 and 14, 
horizontal scale at 10 and vertical still at 1. And let's go ahead and choose OK. And there we are, just kind of doubles up and gives us a bit of a randomness in here, but not too much. We can still see the portrait effect on this. Okay, that takes care of the glitch part of this. Let's now give it some TV interference to make it look like it's from an old VHS tape that's been stretched. And we'll do that by putting in two things. We're putting in some scan lines in here and putting on some grain on top to just kind of make it look like it's an older VHS quality. Let's go back to the background layer grab that and duplicate that layer pull it to the top and I'm gonna put in here just call this one lines there we go let's make that visible it sits on top here there we go now with this one let's do an effect up here filter and filter gallery and I'm going to change this down here to sketch and come down to half tone pattern. Now one of the patterns in here is line. We have circles and dots and line. And you can control the size. I'm going to back this off just a touch. A little minus button right there. Back it up a touch. You can see that picture. There we go. The size controls how thick the lines are and the contrast controls how contrasty it is. Leave the contrast at zero and the size at three, I think looks nice on this particular photo. You may want to adjust that depending upon your photo. Also, notice that this automatically makes it a grayscale image as well. Choose OK. There it goes. There's our lines. Now I need to blend this into everything else underneath. So we need to do a blend mode on this one. So let's go to our blend modes right there. And lots of blend modes in here. The one that I chose is soft light blends it into the layers underneath. We keep our scan lines and we add a little bit of contrast to the image, but we still keep all the everything else, all the other effects in there. Lots of options here. I'm going to go to the top normal and then use the wheel on my mouse just to roll down through these different effects. Like there's darken, multiply, color burn. You get all kinds of really interesting effects in here and you may want to try different ones of these effects depending upon the overall look that you want. Again, for this one, I'll stick with the soft light, which is right there. Okay, there's our scan lines. Let's now put in some grain effect in here to degrade the picture just a little bit. And we'll then do another little touch after that point. So, for the grain effect, I want to have a new layer. I'm going to call this one grain. There we are. And let's fill this with a 50% gray. Now, up here, you have all your grays. That one right there is your 50% gray. This is just the swatches panel. And if you don't have this open, go up to the window menu and come down to swatches right down there. And you want the 50% gray. Choose that. That sets our foreground color at 50% gray. We can then just grab the paint bucket and click in here and set that up. Okay, let's go back up to our filters. Filter, filter gallery again. There we are. Let's go up to Artistic this time and come down to Film Grain right here. Now on this one you have grain size, real fine grain or larger grain. This is normally used if you're trying to match grain in a picture that already has some grain. You put in a non-grained item. You use this to kind of match the grain to match the grain in the picture. For us, let's keep this pegged clear at the top at 20. On the intensity, pull it down. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of an adjustment in here. It's kind of hard to see here. So I'll just go ahead and peg this clear to the top anyway. So there's our grain settings, 20, 0, and 10. Choose OK. That fills that with that grain effect. We now, of course, need to blend this into the rest of our image. And again, that's using our blend mode over here. If I scroll down, you can begin to see different effects in here on this blend mode coming in and blending in this grain. Now, the one that I happen to like on this one is overlay. Now, it's a bit too much. It's a bit too strong on that one. So let's now come back and do a little bit of work on our layers to blend this, these effects into our glitch better. Let's, on this one, I'm going to bring the 
opacity down on this down to about 35% or so. Or just type this in, 35. And that tones down that grain effect. It's still here, but it's toned that down. You can do the same thing with the lines. We can bring the lines down a little bit. I'm going to bring these down to about half of that, to 50. And it's a, just a personal taste in here. If you want to have your lines stronger, then set your opacity higher. If you want to have them a little bit finer, bring your opacity down. Again, just a personal preference on that. Now I want to darken down my corners a bit down here and down here, especially a bit on the light side. So since we're on our lines, let's go up and do a, another filter. Filter, lens correction, bring this one up. There we go. Now in here, I'm going to go over here to custom and where it says vignette, darken left hand side, light and right hand side. I'm going to pull the vignette clear to the left, all the way to the dark, to darken down those corners and choose OK. It just kind of darkens things down just a little bit on the corners and helps kind of blend things together. Now, last little touch on this one. You can come in and you can adjust other layers if you want to. It's up to you. Let's come down to our glitch two. There's our first glitch. Here's our second glitch. We can actually blend these two together now. Right now, this one is just blocking out that one. We can blend these together if you want to. And modify our look just a bit more. So let's click on glitch 2 and set this down to the soft light and that kind of tones down the effect on this one and increases the contrast as well. Again this is kind of a personal preference on that. And you can then bring your opacity down a bit if you want to to adjust the quality level in there. Or you can use a different effect. Notice the different effects in here of all kinds of different qualities. There's the normal this is not showing anything from underneath. If we scroll down, you can begin getting different quality effects in here based upon these different blend modes. And depending upon your final output needs, different effects will be you know, more appropriate. You get stronger effects or less strong effects. And I'm going to go for the soft light effect on this. We get just a little bit of our doubling in there on that. So there it is before and here it is after. You can see right in here and in here in those edges get just a little bit of an additional glitch showing because we're blending that into this one. It just roughens up the edges a bit and gives us a nice more contrasty look. Okay, final thing to look at. Let's add an adjustment layer on top of the whole stack in here. So layer and adjustment layer levels. I tend to like to do this. I'm going to just leave this unchecked here where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Just choose OK. I tend to like doing this on my images frequently just as a final little adjustment. I can kind of adjust my values a bit for the overall image. So I'm going to go a little bit brighter in here on the whites. I think my darks are dark enough. They're pretty black already. So I can leave the darks alone. They don't need much else. And I can adjust the overall values of the picture right here, but I'll leave this at 1. I think that's fine as is. So we're just doing just a little bit of a boost on the whites, making a bit more contrasty on the light end, and choose OK. And there we go. There is this Photoshop glitch effect, giving it kind of a look of a stretched VCR tape. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.